So we can factor trinomials when the number on the front is a 1. We divvy up x squared evenly into the two pieces of the first two binomials. But now we're going to look at the case when it isn't a 1 on the front. So now we might have a constant like 3, and we still might have constants like 1, but we're going to do this new method that helps us factor these a lot faster. Because if we use our standard kind of FOIL method, what we've been doing in order to factor these, it takes a lot of guesswork because now we're not just working with the end constant. Now we also have to take into account the first constant in the combo to get us to the middle. So it's a lot more guesswork. So looking at these, this first one, if we try to factor it using our FOIL method, 3 and 2 are both what kinds of numbers? They're prime. So our only options are 3 and 1 and 2 and 1. So we have to find the right combination of those two. And we also know from these two signs, we need it to multiply to be positive and add to be positive. So when we try our different combinations, we know that both signs are going to be positive. So it takes a little bit of the guesswork out of it when we look at those signs, but it still work. So again, 3x squared, how do we break it up evenly? Uh, the variable evenly, because we can't break up 3 into equal chunks, so 3 has to go somewhere. And 1 has to go somewhere. I'm just going to choose this first. We'll see if this one works. And we know we're going to have positive, positive. Since it multiplies to a positive, adds to a positive. But now what about 2? It's prime. Our only options are 2 and 1. And I'm just going to put them in. We're just going to try. So I know I have to split up 3x squared and 3x and x and 2 into 2 and 1. So let's FOIL quickly and see if this produces the trinomial that we need. So from the first, we get 3x squared. Good, we want that first term. From the outer, we get plus 6x. From the inner, we get another plus x. So just looking at our middle term before we even complete the last, do we get the middle term out that we need? No, it's not going to work for us. So that one's out. So what does that tell me? We might have to try flipping around some of those. So I'm going to keep 3x and x in the same places, but I'm going to trade around 2 and 1. Because we have to find the right combination. We don't have any method to our madness. We're just kind of hacking away at it. But let's check and see, does this one factor correctly? So let's FOIL 3x squared from the first. Good. Outer, we've got 3x. Inner, we've got another 2x. It's looking promising. And we'll check the last. We get 2. So if we combine these two terms together, do we get 5x? We sure do. So yes, this one was correct. The first one was not. That one was out. And that's just when we have positive, positive for our signs here. Imagine if we've got a mix of positive and negative. And we've got even more combinations to try. Or we could have larger numbers, like in this next example. 3 is prime, but we have a whole bunch of factors of 20. So what are some of the options for 20? 1 and 20, that could work. 2 and 10, that could be our combo. What else? 4 and 5, 5 and 4, 10 and 2. The reverse of all of those could be in our combination as well. But what's special about 3 again? It's prime, so let's just try some of these. Maybe I put a 3 and a 1 here. Nice thing about these signs, they're both positive. So let's just try. 1 and 20, those are going to make big numbers. So we're not going to try plugging those in, but you could. Uh, next factors, 2 and 10. Maybe I put a 2 here and a 10 here. Let's see if that works. Let's just verbally check it real quick. So from the first, 3x squared. Outer we get 30x plus 2 gives me 32 in the middle. We want 19, so that one's out. Other combination, maybe we switch these around. Now I've got 3x, 10, and x plus 2. Is that one going to work? Let's try. Foiling, we get 3x squared plus 6x plus 10x give us 16, and we want 19. That one's out. Okay, another combo. 
Again, 3 and x, we'll keep those in the same place. Next factor is to try 4 and 5. So maybe I put the 5 here and the 4 there. Well, that wouldn't work. So let's check. 3x squared plus 12 plus 5 doesn't give us 19. That one's out. So maybe let's try switching the order of 4 and 5. We want the right combo. So now when we FOIL this one, let's check, see what we get. 3x squared plus 15x plus 4x gives us 19 plus 20. So we finally found the one that was correct. But that was just when our signs were positive and our numbers were relatively small. So there's got to be a better way. Instead of just guessing and checking to get us there, if you hadn't even chosen those couple combos, it might have taken you even longer. So we need something better. So example, now factor 12x squared plus 23x plus 10 by this FOIL method. 12 has tons of factors, 10 has tons of factors. Getting the right combo to 23 is going to take forever. So what's called the AC method takes into account the A value and the C value on a trinomial. So when it's in a standard form, like AX squared plus BX plus C, this is what we mean. This is what we're looking at. So we take the A value when it's in descending order, the thing on the front, and the C value, the constant on the end. Those are what we focus on. So whenever we factor, just running through the rules, we always take out the greatest common. If there's anything that we can factor out of every single term to make those numbers nicer, we want to. Then what do we do? We take our A constant and our C constant and multiply those together. Then we want to break up the product, much like when we factored traditionally. Break up the product to multiply to the product and add to our middle term. So we always focus on multiplying to something and adding to the middle. And when we've got that, we just rewrite the middle term with those new factors. Sounds super complicated, but we'll do tons of examples. You'll get comfortable with it, and it'll save you so much time. So this first one, we can factor traditionally really quick and get us there. But we also want to learn this new method. So we're going to do it on an easy example that we know factors nicely. And we'll factor traditionally at the end to double check. But very first, by the AC method, is there anything common that we can take out of all three of these? We always want to check that first. There isn't. There's no greatest common factor. So the next thing, is it in descending order? Do we have this standard form? Yes. So our A value is the constant on the front, which is 1. A is 1. And what's our C value? Constant on the end is 10. So what do we do with those? We multiply them together. So A times C is 10. So we want to break up 10 into factors that multiply to 10 and add to 7, whatever number is in the middle. So factors of 10, that get us there. We can just try. 1 and 10 multiplies to get us to 10, adds to 11, doesn't work for us. Next, factors of 10, 2 and 5. Multiplies to get us there, adds to get to 7. So these are the two that are going to work for us. So what's nice about the AC method is we're just taking the middle term and rewriting it in terms of 2 and 5. So we're basically taking three terms and writing it as a four-term polynomial because we know how to handle those. All right, so it doesn't matter our order, but I could rewrite 7, 7x, as 2x plus 5x. Feels funny, but it's intentional. So if we can combine these two together, do we get back up to our middle term? Yes. 2 and 5 together gives us 7. So we've just rewritten the middle term into two new ones that do this special rule. They multiply to the end um, to our AC value and they add to the thing in the middle. And whenever we see a polynomial with four terms, how do we factor? We group. The first two together, and the last two together. And the sign always goes with the middle term. If it's negative, it goes with. If it's positive, it goes with. Then, what do we do? 
look inside of the chunks. Common between these two that we can take out of both is an x. And when we do that, what are we left with? x plus 2. Then we do the same thing for the second chunk. What's common between these two that we can take out of both? A positive 5. And when we do that, what are we left with? x plus 2. Now, the inside of the parentheses have to match exactly, and they do, because now what's common between this chunk and this chunk that we can take out of both? That entire factor, x plus 2, and when we take that out of our first term, what are we left with? An x, and when we take it out of our second term, what are we left with? 5. And it's factored. We've got two binomials being multiplied together. Okay, and traditionally, we could have factored this really quick. Uh, factors of 10 that add to 7, we know it's 2 and 5. Both signs are positive, so it factors just like this. Okay, but we want to get used to the process when that number isn't a 1 on the front. This will still work for us. So all that we do, is there anything common? Yes or no? If there is, take it out. Look at A, look at C, and multiply them together. Figure out the factors, and then just rewrite our middle term with those two new ones. Okay, we're going to keep practicing with these. A couple more examples. Looking in part A, is there anything common that we can take out of every single one of these terms? No, they don't share anything in common. There's no greatest common factor to take out. What is my A value in this case? A is 3 and my c value is negative 8. The sign always goes with the term. So we have those two, and again, what do we do with them? Multiply them together. What is a times c? Negative 8 times 3 gives me negative 24. And we want to break that up into things, multiplying to negative 24, adding to 10. Always the term in the middle. So let's just try some. Maybe negative 1 and 24. Or reversing the signs, any combo of moving the negative. Will that get us there? Nope, the numbers are way too big. Next factors, negative 2 and 12. Any uh, combination, positive and negative, will that get us to 10? Yes. And specifically, which one needs to be positive? The larger of the two. So how we guessed it the first time is what we need. Factors, negative 2 and 12, will work for us. So now we can choose what factor we want to write first. When we split up 10 into negative 2 and 12. So what I like to do is I like to look at the thing on the front. So my first term is 3x squared. So just looking at the constant, what does 3 have more in common with? Does it have more in common with negative 2? Or does it have more in common with 12? Has more in common with 12. So we'll group those together. So we've got positive 12, 12, x. Again, whatever variable is on the end tells us how to write it. And the other factor that we need, negative 2x, minus 8. So we took positive 10 and we rewrote it into positive 12, negative 2. If we add those together, we get back up to the top. So whenever we see a polynomial with four terms, how do we handle it? Factor by grouping. First two together, second two together, the sign goes with the third term. So now we need to look and see, well, what's common? Well, we wrote it specifically, so 3 and 12 have things in common. Even if we switch the order, it would still get us there. But this is more natural. So between 3x squared and 12x, what do they share in common that we can take out of both? A 3 and an x, and when we do that, what are we left with? So I took 3x out of 3x squared, we're left with 1x. 3 out of 12, we're left with 4. Now our insides need to match exactly on these parentheses. These are all positive, and these are all negative. So we need to take out a negative from the second chunk. And even so, what do they share in common between these two? A 2. So we'll take out negative 2. And then what does it turn into? It should match this if we've done it correctly, or if it doesn't factor, it won't. 
But this one will, when we take negative 2 out of negative 2x, we're left with x. Negative 2 out of negative 8, we're left with positive 4. So again, do our parentheses match exactly? Yes. So common between these two pieces that we can take out of both is that entire factor, x plus 4. And when we take that out of our first chunk, what are we left with? 3x. When we take x plus 4 out of the second piece, what are we left with? Negative 2. So the combination that got us there was 1 and 3 and 4 and negative 2. We didn't have to guess and check. We were intentional with it, and it saved us time. Okay, we're just going to keep practicing some more. Part B, is there anything common between all three of these that we can take out of them? No, again, no greatest common factor. My A value in this case is 6. My C value is 20. If we multiply those together, A times C, 6 times 20, what do we get? 120. So we had to break up 120 to multiply here and add to 23. And this one's positive, and this one's positive. To multiply to get a positive and add to get a positive, they both need to be positive. So let's just look at the factors. 1 and 20, excuse me, 1 and 120, way too big. They won't add to 23, so let's start smaller than that. 2 and 60, I'm going to go in order, still too large. Next one's 3 and 40, getting closer, but that gives me 43. We need 23. 4 and 30 gives me 34. We're looking for 23. Next factor of 120 is 5 and 24 gives us 29. We're getting closer. Next factor, 6 and 20, what we started with. If we add those together, we get 26. Still too large. Next factor is 8. 8 and 15. We found the ticket. Took us a little, little bit. But instead of checking all of these in our factors, we just have to run through them in our list. So 8 and 15 will work for us. So now we can ask, what has more in common with 6? 8 or 15? And it really doesn't matter because it shares something in common with both. So whichever you want to put first, go for it. It's really not going to matter. It shares something in common with both of them. I'm going to say it shares more in common with 8 just because that came first. So I've got 6x squared plus rewriting my 23 in terms of these, 8x plus 15x plus 20. So we can always check if we combine our middle two terms, do we get back up to 23? We sure do. Whenever we see a polynomial with four terms, we group the first two and the last two, and we have to take out what's common. So common between the first two that we can take out of both is 2x. When we do that, what are we left with? We've got 3x plus 4. We need these to match exactly. I've got positives everywhere, positives everywhere. Great. So we just have to look at the constant that we can take out. Positive, common between both of these that we can take out is what? A 5. And when we do that, what are we left with? 3x plus 4. We've done it correctly because what's matching? Stuff inside of the parentheses. Common between these two that we can take out of both is that entire factor, 3x plus 4. When we take that out of the first piece, what are we left with? 2x. When we take it out of the second piece, what are we left with? Positive 5. That would take me a while to guess and check to get to the correct answer. But the AC method makes all the work basically come out in the factors, checking multiplication and addition. All right, so let's go for a super hard one as our last before you try your own. In this case, do they share anything in common that we could take out of everything? I sure hope so, because I don't want to deal with x to the 6th, 5th, and 4th. All right, so let's just look. Between the numbers, 18, 57, and 30, what do they share in common that we could take out of everything? A 3. 
Now looking between the variables, what's the largest power on x that we can take out of all of them? Always the smallest that we see. x to the fourth can come out of all of them. So when we take 3 out of 18, what are we left with? We've got 6. And when we take x to the fourth out of x to the sixth, how many factors do we have left over? 2. Same story for the next term. 3 out of negative 57 gives us negative 19. I took four x's out. I've got one left over. And in the last term, I took all of the x's out, and I took a 3 out of 30. So what are we left with there? 10. I sure like 6 and 10 better than 18 and 30 and whatever that produces when we multiply them. So we want to carry along our greatest common factor as we factor, as we keep breaking this part down farther. It is a part of our answer, so we need it. So looking at our trinomial now, that's reduced a little bit. Our a value is 6. Our c value is 10. So let's multiply those together. 6 times 10 is 60. We need factors multiplying to 60, positive, and adding to what? Negative 19. So what does that tell me about my factors of 60? To multiply to get a positive, either they're both positive or they're both negative. If they're both positive, it doesn't give me this middle term. It will give me a positive 19. We want a negative. So we're breaking up 60 into two negative factors that add to negative 19. So let's just try some. All right, 1 and 60, too big. 2 and 30, still too big. We'll try 3 and 20, both being negative. Getting closer, but if we add those two together, we get negative 23. Doesn't quite work for us. So the next factor in line, negative 4 and negative 15. If we multiply those, we get positive 60. If we add them, we get 19. So we're halfway there. And again, we have to write out front what's part of our answer. Carry it along the entire way, 3x to the fourth. But now, 6x squared, what does it have more in common with? Negative 4 or negative 15? Doesn't really matter. It shares things in common with both. I'm going to put negative 4 first. I like the smaller numbers together and the bigger numbers together. We could also look at the n constant and say, well, what does 10 have more in common with? 15 or 4? I would probably say 15 but it, sh it shares something in common with both of them. All right, so now we've got four terms. Again, we can check, combine these together, we get to negative 19. Four-term polynomial, what do we do? Group the first two, group the last two. Still on the outside of everything, 3x to the fourth. But now, what's common between these two that we can take out of both of them? 2x. And when we do that, what are we left with? 3x minus 2. We need these to match exactly. And right now I've got positive, negative, negative, positive. So what do we need to take out of this in addition to the constant? A negative sign. And what do they share in common between them? A 5. When we take negative 5 out of negative 15x, we get positive 3x. We take negative 5 out of positive 10, we get negative 2. So matching exactly on the inside of those parentheses, we need that to happen. And again, outside, a part of our solution, 3x to the fourth still. But common between these two that we could take out of both was 3x minus 2. When we took it out of the first piece, what were we left with? 2x. When we take it out of the second piece, what are we left with? Negative 5. And the order doesn't matter with these at all. You could write out 3x to the fourth and put 2x minus 5, that factor first. It really doesn't matter the order for multiplication. And again, how can we always check these? If you don't think you factored it correctly, we can multiply it all out, put in the greatest common factor, make sure we get here. Multiply it out. Make sure we get to the beginning. 
multiply it out, make sure we get to the beginning. We always have a check. So take those next couple examples, practice factoring using the AC method. Each of these can be factored by the AC method. Very first thing we always want to check, is there anything that we can take out of all three of those terms? They don't share anything in common. So our A value in this case, what are we looking at? 4, C value, negative 3. So A times C, 4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12. We need it to multiply to negative 12, our factors, and add to 4. We need a positive and a negative, and the larger one needs to be what? Positive. So what factors of 12, both multiply to negative 12 and add to 4? We need 6 and negative 2. Larger one needs to be positive. When we add them, we get positive 4. What has more in common with 4? 6 or 2, doesn't matter. What has more in common with 3? 6 or 2? I would say 6, so I'm going to put 4 with negative 2. Doesn't matter though, you'll still get to the same answer, even if you re rewrite it in a different order. So 4x squared comes first. Negative 2x, I'm choosing to write next, but it doesn't really matter. Positive 6x and negative 3. Adding our two terms together, do we get back up to our middle? Yes, we can always check that. Polynomial with four terms, what do we do? Group the first two, group the last two. Common between the two of first terms, what can we take out? 2x, and when we do that, what are we left with? 2x minus 1. We need these to match exactly, all the signs line up, so common between these two that we can take out is a positive 3, and we're left with 2x minus 1. Inside the parentheses match exactly. So common between these two pieces that we can take out of both is that entire factor, 2x minus 1. And when we take that out of the first term, we're left with 2x. When we take it out of the second, we're left with positive 3. Order doesn't matter if you flip the insides, insides and said 6x minus 2x, you would get these in a reversed order. But they still mean the same. We can always FOIL it out to double check and make sure we get back up to the original trinomial. Okay, next one, common between 16, 16, and 12. What could we take out between all of them? 4. It'll make the numbers nicer instead of multiplying 16 and negative 12 together. So we take 4 out of 16. We're left with 4x squared. 4 out of 16, 4x. 4 out of negative 12, we've got negative 3. So instead of 16 and negative 12 multiplying those, what are we multiplying? 4 and negative 3. It looks very similar to what we just did. We factored that one. But again, we'll run through it. A times C, we get negative 12. Factors multiplying to negative 12, adding to positive 4, 6 and negative 2. And again, I'm going to show you the reverse order. Maybe I group 6 with 4 instead now just to show you we still get the same answer. 4x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 3. Same trinomial that we have up here, but 4 is a part of our answer on the front. Again, we can flip the order of those factors and we'll still get out the same answer. So let's see. Still have the 4 out front. Common between these two that we can take out of both is 2x. When we do that, we're left with 2x plus 3. We need these to match exactly, and the constants do, but our signs do not. So what do we need to take out of this term to make our parentheses match exactly? A negative 1. Changing the signs, now we've got 2x plus 3. Matching exactly on the inside of our parentheses is that entire factor. So what do we have? 4 times 2x plus 3, and when we take those out, what are we left with? 2x minus 1. So again, order doesn't matter with multiplication. Even though we switch the factors around, still the same answer. We can always FOIL it out to double check. And the last one, pretty big, and the powers on x are large. So what can we take out common between all of these? So all of the constants are even. We can at least take out a 2, and we can only take out a 2. 
And then the smallest power on x that we see is always the largest that we can take out of all of them. So we can take out x cubed. 2x cubed. When we do that, what is our first term turning into now? 10x to the second power. 2 out of 46, we get negative 23. x, 2 out of 24, we've got 12. x cubed out of x cubed, they're all gone. Okay, and we can look again. Was 2 the largest thing that we could take out between all of them? Yep, because 23 is odd, and the rest are even. So our a value, what are we looking at? 10. c value, 12. Sounds big, but it's a lot smaller than 20 and 24 being multiplied. So if we multiply 10 and 12 together, we get 120. We need it to multiply to be positive, but add to be what? Negative 23. So that tells me what about these factors? They're both going to be negative. So 1 and 120, they're too big. 2, 60, still too big. 3, we're not going to worry about, still too big. Let's try negative 4, and its counterpart, negative 30. Still too large, negative 34. But we're getting closer. Next, negative 5 and negative 24. Negative 29, when we add them, getting closer. Negative 6, negative 20. Add them together, we get negative 26. Multiply, we do get to what we need. Almost there. Next factor that we need negative 8, negative 15. Combo of those two adds to negative 23, multiply them, we get to 120. So what has more in common with 10, 8, or 15? Either one doesn't matter, they both share something in common. I kind of would naturally say 15, because when we look at 12, what does 12 have more in common with 8 or 15? I would put 12 with 8, but again, it doesn't matter. So 2x cubed, that's a part of our answer. We still need it. 10x squared is our first term. We rewrite negative 23 with these two. I'm going to group negative 15 with the first, negative 8 with the second. But again, it doesn't matter. You could flip these and still get the same answer, like we saw over here. Polynomial four terms, group them together. First two, last two. Sign goes with the third term. So it's still a part of our answer on the outside. Little bugger hanging on. Common between these two, what can we take out of both? 5x. When we do that, what are we left with? 2x minus 3. We need these to match exactly, and our signs are opposites. So we need to take out a negative. And what do they share in common? A 4. When we take 4 out of 8, we've got 2x. 4 out of 12 negative 4 out of 12, excuse me, we get negative 3. All right, we're almost there, matching exactly on the inside of the parentheses, 2x minus 3. So we've got 2x cubed, we factor out 2x minus 3, and what are we left with? 5x minus 4. And again, if you flip the order, these two would be switched, but order doesn't matter with multiplication, it's commutative, we can change the order. We can have a mix of variables, like m squareds and n squareds, or a's and b's, and the AC method will still work for us. Takes the guesswork out of how to split up those two terms on the end, but it's the same process. We look at the constants. Is there anything common that we can take out of all of these? No. So, what is our a value? 30, and our c value is negative 11. So, 30 times negative 11 gives us negative 330. And we need things multiplying to negative 330, adding to 23. To multiply to get a negative, we need a positive and a negative. So, larger one needs to be positive. So when we add it, we get to 23. And what combo will get us to 23? 33 and 10 will work for us. Which one needs to be positive? Which one needs to be negative? Larger one needs to be positive. Smaller one needs to be negative. What has more in common with 30, 33, or negative 10? It doesn't matter. I'm going to say negative 10. So I'm going to go ahead and group 30m squared with negative 10 
But what variables do these get, the middle terms? Whatever our middle term has is what they need. Mn, negative 10. And the second one, 33 mn minus 11n squared. So yeah, 33 has more in common with 11. We could also look at the n term to figure out what shares more in common with what. Four terms, group the first two and the last two, behaves just as normal. Common between the first two that we can take out of both. 10, and what else? An m. When we do that, we're left with 3m minus what? n. Common between these two that we can take out of both is 11. And what else? An n. When we do that, we're left with 3m minus n. They should match exactly on the inside of the parentheses, and they do. So common between those two that we can take out is 3m minus n, and we're left with 10m plus 11n. Order doesn't matter with those. We could flip them around. It means the same thing. All right. One more of those just to practice with the mixed variables. Anything common between all three of these? There sure is. We can take out a 3. And when we do that, what are we left with? 20a squared plus 41ab minus 9b squared. A value in that case, what are we looking at? 20. C value is negative 9. When we multiply those, 20 times negative 9, we get out negative 180. To multiply to get a negative, we need a positive and a negative, and the larger one needs to be what? Positive. So we get out positive 41 when we add them together. So what factors of negative 180 will work for us? 4 and 45. Larger one needs to be positive, smaller one needs to be negative. What has more in common with 20, 4, or 45? I would probably say 4, so we'll group those together. But really, it doesn't matter. 20a squared plus, just kidding, 4 is negative. Negative 4ab plus 45ab minus 9b squared. 9 definitely has more in common with 45, so that was a good route to go with our grouping. Four terms, put the first two and the last two together. We have to carry along our straggler 3. He's a part of our answer still. And what's common between these two that we can take out of both? A 4 and an a. When we do that, we're left with 5a minus b. Common between the second two that we can take out of both is a 9b. And when we do that, what are we left with? 5a minus b. Matching exactly inside of our parentheses. We want that to happen. 5a minus b. Got to write out the straggler all the way along. We took out what's common. And what are we left with? 4a plus 9b. You can always check by multiplying it all back out. So the last part, there's one for you to try. Take out anything co that's common, if there is any, factor using the AC method. So is there anything common? 21, 5, and 4, no. A value in this case is 21. B value is negative 4. When we multiply those, we get negative 84. It's negative, so one of the factors needs to be positive. One of them needs to be negative. The larger one needs to be what? Negative. What combo? multiplies to negative 84, adds to 5. 12 and 7, larger one needs to be negative, smaller one needs to be positive. What has more in common with 21? 12 or 7? I would say 7. So I'm going to group 21x squared plus 7xy minus 12xy minus 4y squared. What has more in common with negative 4? Negative 12. We did good groupy. Whenever we have four terms, we put the first two and the last two together. Sign goes with the middle term. Common between these two that we can take out of both is 7x. When we do that, we're left with 3x plus y. 
We need these to match exactly, so we need to take out a negative. And what's common between them? 4y. When we take that out of the first term, we're left with 3x. Take it out of the second, we're left with plus y. Matching exactly on the insides, is that factor 3x plus y. When we remove that from the first, we're left with 7x. From the second, negative 4y. Order doesn't matter, we could flip those around. And again, we can always check by foiling.